5 and 10. Tonight at 6. Followed home and robbed in the driveway. Details of what happened to a Mid-South family, plus the investigation. A scam warning for all MLGW customers. If you're getting out on the water this 4th of July, you best be careful. Wildlife agents will be out cracking down on those breaking the law. New rules for your 401k, what you need to know about your retirement fund. A Cordova community blindsided. Tonight, residents are part of the city of Memphis. We're learning more about what happens with school children in the contentious Cordova annexation battle. Breaking news, Memphis police found the body of a child in a dumpster near Butler and Allen. Right now, crime scene experts are collecting evidence from that dumpster and the coroner is working to identify the child. This is the same area where three-year-old Maurice Brown Jr. disappeared nearly two days ago. Brown's father is now in jail. Action News 5's Jason Miles is live at the scene tonight. Jason? Ursula, it's been about three hours since Memphis Police Director Tony Armstrong confirmed a three-year-old's body was found in a dumpster here at Butler and Allen, just south of downtown Memphis. But as of yet, still no positive identification. Let's take a look at the much more active scene from earlier this afternoon. We watched as the dumpster in which the child's body was found was taken away to the crime lab for further processing. Police discovered that body during an expanded search of this area for missing three-year-old Maurice Brown Jr. His father said the boy disappeared from a nearby apartment Sunday night while he was asleep. Maurice Brown Sr. has since been charged with child neglect and endangerment and now may face much more serious charges as a result of today's discovery. Again, let me reiterate that at this time, we do not have a positive identification as to the, uh, the identity of the child that we have recovered. We expect to get new information from police sometime this evening. That could include a positive identification of the body found here today, which appears, and again, it appears at this point that it may be that of three-year-old Maurice Brown Jr. I can't help but think back a couple of weeks ago to a lady named Shakara Dickens, that Memphis mother who confessed on the stand during her sentencing hearing that she had killed her daughter and dumped the body in a dumpster behind her apartment. Now, these two cases, both very sad and seemingly quite similar. Reporting live just south of downtown Memphis, Jason Miles, Action News 5. All right, Jason, right now the boy's father, as you said, Maurice Brown Sr., is being held on $1 million bond and is charged in the child's disappearance. Brown appeared in court today on aggravated child neglect and child endangerment charges. He told Memphis police his three-year-old child walked away from their apartment on Sunday evening while he was sleeping. Brown even accused gang members of kidnapping Maurice Brown Jr. Count on Action News 5 for continuing coverage of this breaking news story as we'll bring you every development on the air and online at WMCTV.com, Twitter, and our Facebook page. Now to a breaking news update on a driveway robbery at a DeSoto County home. Chopper 5 has your exclusive view. Tonight, we know the driver of a stolen car from Memphis followed the victim home. Now investigators are searching for the robbery suspects. Action News 5's Jamel Major joins us live in the Breaking News Center. Jamel. Joe, right now investigators are piecing together clues and gathering evidence as they try to solve this bizarre robbery that has left a DeSoto fa County family shaken. Dylan Chesser says what happened to a member of his friend's family is senseless. They've been going through a lot, and I mean, I hate it for them. And, you know, I wish there was something that I could have done, but I mean, there's, I mean, it, it happens to everybody. Take a look at this exclusive view from Chopper 5 of the driveway robbery scene in North Mississippi Monday night. The DeSoto County Sheriff's Office says the driver of a stolen car from Memphis followed a DeSoto County resident home and robbed that resident in the driveway. Way. Chopper 5 was over the scene in Lewisburg, Mississippi near Olive Branch just after the stolen car was towed. I stopped by the home Tuesday. Sorry to hear about what happened to you guys. We just wanted to see if we can maybe talk with you. Just no, to, I don't want to talk. I just prefer to be on news and keep it personal. Now the entire community remains on guard. More than likely you can recognize you're being followed and do something about it and not go home. As investigators look for the robbery suspects. You have nothing to lose, so what's the chance? I mean, what, what chance are you taking? I mean, if you get put in jail, you have a, you know, you got a cooked meal. I mean, people who don't have cooked meals and people who aren't, aren't scared to lose anything, I mean, that's just the kind of stuff they're willing to do. 
And if you have any information that can help authorities solve this crime, you can call the DeSoto County Sheriff's Office at 662-429-1460. Live in the breaking news center, Jamel Major, Action News 5. Tonight, some residents of a Cordova community are fighting back after they were annexed by the city of Memphis this weekend. Just to be clear, we're talking about a 650 acre area of land bordering Germantown, Houston Levee, Germantown Parkway and Walnut Grove. You can see it clearly from our Action News 5 Pathfinder here. Tonight, residents say they feel blindsided. Midnight Sunday, 4,900 South Cordova residents became Memphians. The legal fight started some 11 years ago back in 2001. Now folks want to know what's going to change. We have some answers. Their taxes will nearly double. The bill will be prorated from January and arrive in the mail within three weeks. Light poles will now be required on their streets. Children may, may have to switch school. That's undecided. Action News 5's Kanji Anthony is live with new developments that surfaced in the past few hours. Kanji? City leaders, county leaders, and citizens have been on the horn since Sunday's surprise annexation. Tonight we have a clearer picture of what will happen to students who are worried that they'll be displaced in this turf change. Even lawmakers like Tennessee State Representative Steve McManus were caught off guard by South Cordova's midnight annexation into Memphis Sunday. Welcome to Memphis. Yeah, we're in the city. Councilman Bill Boyd is South Cordova's new city representative. So I asked Boyd his plans to allay concerns that the annexation will impact where students currently go to school. Everything will remain stable there. Boyd confirmed no changes will happen in the 2012-2013 school year. We will continue to uh, attend those classes. They'll be welcome back to those schools. He said Cordova's school lines will stay intact, though they will now have Memphis residency. There will not be any changes in the uh, borderlines or any of that, uh, so no, no reassignments, so everything will remain the same. He also had new information to share about how long South Cordova students will be allowed to go to Germantown schools after 2012-2013. It appears that they will probably be in place for two years beyond that as well. So there's a lot of stability there for them, so they shouldn't have any fears. Boyd, a Cordova resident himself, also plans to fight the city administration's plan to collect taxes retroactively from January of this year. I wouldn't want to pay for taxes where I did not receive the services. So I've, the, the attorney's office has to show me where that is uh, legal. Now, Representative McManus is meeting with attorneys to uh, fight that tax bill, that retroactive tax bill that's supposed to arrive in the mail in just three weeks. Meanwhile, Boyd is playing an informational meeting with Mayor A.C. Wharton to answer questions for citizens. For now, reporting live, Kanji Anthony, Action News 5. It's still hot in the Mid-South tonight, of course, but we got a slight break from the dangerous record temperatures. How hot is it right now? Let's go straight over Chief Meteorologist Dave Brown for the answer. Dave? In Memphis, 95 degrees at the moment. Our high this afternoon made it up to 98 degrees. That was about 245 this afternoon. Storm Track Doppler 5 is showing other temperatures around the area. It's 94 in Jackson, 95 in Selmer and Corinth. 97 in Hernando, that's the hot spot at the moment. You'll notice a couple of dots showing up over the uh, outer portions of the radar. Unfortunately, those showers not headed our way. I'll tell you about rain chances when I'm back with my seven day forecast and that's coming up a bit later. Many of you are headed to the water to cool off and celebrate the 4th of July, but consider yourself forewarned. If you drink and drive a boat, you may get busted. Action News 5's Justin Hansen joins us live in the studio with the story. Justin? Well, Joe, you could face a several thousand dollar fine, time in jail, and no boating license for six months if you're drinking and driving out on the water. And that was if you're out on the water this 4th of July, Water is all boat drivers better be drinking if they plan to stay out on the river or lake. We're looking for BUIs, boating under the influence, and we're going to check for safety equipment. Make sure everybody's got their life jackets, uh, make sure all the kids have got their life jackets on. Wildlife officers and others will be out checking those having fun this holiday. They plan to target areas along the Mississippi and Hatchie Rivers, as well as Kentucky and Pickwick Lakes. Across the state, we've had nine fatalities uh, due to boating accidents, due to reckless uh, operation of a boat, BUIs, 
um, and we've had approximately 85 accidents. Tennessee Wildlife Resources agent Jake Yo we, says we, it's not out, illegal to drink inside a boat. He says it's just against the law for the driver of that boat to be drinking. He also says children under 13 years of age must wear a life jacket at all times. If somebody's out here driving a boat while impaired and they run over another family and kill somebody else, that's something they have to live with the rest of their lives. Uh, and it's it's not worth it. It's not worth ruining your life or another family's lives just because you want to get out here and uh, and drink. Officers will be out with a vigilant eye ready to write tickets and send people to jail. Officer Yose tells me he's arrested four people in Tipton and Lauderdale County alone for boating under the influence this season and he expects more arrests this week. Live in studio, Justin Hanson, Action News 5. A scam warning from Memphis Light, Gas and Water. Customers are falsely being told President Obama approved special funding through the Federal Reserve Bank for utility bill assistance. This is a lie. It's a scam. There's no such funding. The scammers giving victims a toll-free number to call, then ask for the customer's social security number and additional information. Customers who believe they have been victimized by this scam should contact MLGW at this number, 901-544-MLGW. Next at 6. The warranties don't cover theft. Protecting your electronic gadgets without buying the store warranty. Plus. A swimming program in the Mid-South is making a splash with an Olympic medalist. I'll tell you how you made their dream come true. And all new at 10, brawling in the sanctuary, yelling, fighting, and the pastor beaten with a Bible. Now police have to watch the pews. Janice Broach investigates a Mid-South church at 10. Tonight at 10. They are tiny assassins, and they're searching for skin. They'll feed on any naked skin. What's been a problem in South America has infiltrated the Mid-South. Scientists warn it could be the kiss of death. My tongue started swelling, sticking half out of my mouth. Anna Marie Hartman investigates what you need to know to protect yourself and your pets. Dogs will eat the bugs and become sick and possibly die. Save yourself from the kissing bug. Tonight on Action News 5 at 10. Storm check. It's a common question at the checkout line when you buy electronics. Do you want an extended warranty? You may feel pressured, but do you have to buy the coverage at the store to protect your smartphone, tablet, or laptop? Extended warranties from companies like Apple Eye Care or Square Trade can do a good job of fixing damaged phones, tablets, and iPods. But there are limitations. Aaron Cooper with Worth Avenue Group says instead of buying extended warranties at the checkout counter, try buying insurance for your electronic gadget. He says it's much more important now than ever. You don't go anywhere nowadays without having your phone with you. Um, it's in your pocket. It's on the table. You're taking it out of your pocket. You're texting. You're, you're on Twitter. You're on Facebook. I mean, people do not want to be without their device. And, uh, you know, the more you use it, the more liable it is uh, to be damaged. Cooper says there is no deadline to sign up for their coverage versus the 30-day deadline with other warranties. Price-wise, coverage for an iPhone can be around $80 a year and about half that for an iPad. Tonight, there are new rules about your 401k. The U.S. Labor Department now requires extensive disclosure of all 401k charges. Mutual fund firms and other 401k companies now must disclose all fees to employers and employer and employers will have to pass that along to their workers. And great news for Beale Street. The Hard Rock Cafe signed a lease to stay on the famous brick paved street for another five years. According to the Memphis Business Journal, the restaurant signed an extension. The Memphis Hard Rock Cafe opened in 1997, November of that year. The company signed a 10-year lease with three five-year lease options. Tonight, we're sending out a high five to the Make a Splash organization for winning a chance to take a dip with an Olympic swimmer. Action News 5's Jerrica Phillips joins us live here in our studio with the very latest on this Olympic story that's making a lot of folks smile. Jerrica? Well, Joe, since the program began four years ago, they have taught over 3,000 students and children to swim. To win this national contest, they say all they had to do was tell their story. 
2008, two African American teens drowned in Memphis. On the same day. On the same day. The same day. Using these faces to tell their story, make a splash mid south enter the Phillips 66 water safety contest. I thought we would have a pretty good chance. Like I couldn't imagine us not winning or not being at least a finalist. Monday, the USA Swimming Foundation announced that their video was the winner. I could not be more excited, and I gotta have a shout out for everybody who voted. Kids like me. Kids like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Kids like the big winners, kids like them will have the opportunity to meet Olympic gold medalist Cullen Jones as part of a swim lesson he'll hold in Memphis. And they're competing in races and they're winning. Kia Hamilton says she had the honor of meeting Jones once before. He's an amazing swimmer, an amazing person, and I can't wait to meet him again to see him swimming and teaching like right in front of me. The Memphis-based Water Safety Coalition received more than 500,000 online votes and along with a visit from Jones, they'll also receive a $5,000 grant. We can help with lifeguard training provide CPR, look at the research, make sure that we're doing what, what really counts. Russell Turner took part in the video and says like all other sports, he learned that swimming takes technique. Yeah, I think about your leg position, your arm position, how fast you move through the arm, how you pacing yourself as you're doing laps. Upon meeting Jones, Turner plans to challenge him in the water. I don't know, I may lose, but I don't give it a shot. Just say I'll race the Olympic swimmer. And Make a Splash is sponsored by Labonna Children's Hospital, Safe Kids Mid-South, the City of Memphis, the University of Memphis, and 30 other community partners. To watch their winning video, click the link in my story on WMCTV.com. Reporting live in the studio tonight, Jerrica Phillips, Action News 5. All right, thanks, Jerrica. Believe it or not, there's a 5K tonight at 7 o'clock over at the Liberty Bowl at Tiger Lane. It's the Memphis Stars and Stripes 5K. And folks really need to be careful. They need to really drink a lot of water before they head out, right, Dave? Yeah, it's going to be 93 degrees or so. It's 95 right now, 93, I would say. The heat index won't be 100, but it'll, it'll be upper 90s, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Let's talk about it. Let's, uh, let's begin by taking a look at Storm Track Doppler 5 once again. I still have the temperatures up there. There's that 95 degree reading you see in Memphis. Rain, it's fading out even in the places where it's been showing up this afternoon over northeast Arkansas. There's some way over in middle Tennessee. None of that is coming in our direction, I'm afraid. We're just going to have to deal with what we got here for a little bit longer, and that's being too dry. 94, the current temperature in Somerville on the ALF Insurance Camera Network after a high this afternoon of 95 degrees. Weather headlines, well, even fewer showers coming up tomorrow and in a couple of days ahead. 100s are returning, and we'll update those Monday rain chances that we talked about yesterday. Here's clouds and radar from uh, the last 12 hours. You see how stuff sort of fired up in these areas, but then fades as we lose the heating of the day. Futurecast indicating correctly that's going to continue to happen. Now, during the day tomorrow, there is still a chance for an isolated shower to pop up here and there. But I think even fewer tomorrow than we saw today, and there were very few today that were around uh, the Action News 5 coverage area. These are the high temperatures. Uh, 100 degree readings are going to be common. Dyersburg, my old hometown of Trenton, 98 in cold water. Ripley, Mississippi, up to 96 tomorrow. Over the western counties, 100 in Jonesboro and Mark Tree, 101 perhaps in Carothersville and in Blytheville. In Memphis, expect a low by morning of 78 under a partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow, it'll still be partly cloudy, 99, that close to 100, wind southwest at 8 miles per hour. It'll be even closer on Thursday. It'll hit 100, I believe. Same thing Friday and Saturday. Sunday, partly cloudy, 99. Monday, that chance of rain, I'm afraid it's a slight bit less today than it was tomorrow. Only about 20%. Yesterday, I was thinking maybe around 30%. We'll continue to track that and keep our fingers crossed for a nice gentle rain that lasts about four hours. <laughs> but I'm not holding my breath on that. That would feel good, wouldn't it? It would. Thank you, Dave. Jarvis returns with sports next. You trying to jump through that? I'm trying to get my Social Security. And they told you that if you jump through that hoop, you were going to get your check? It's only one. Oops, more hoops. You know, we're Gaddy Keltner, Bienvenue, and Montese. We can make this a lot easier. What about all these? We're your lawyers. We don't make you jump through hoops. I guess I should have called you at the start. Call 526-2126 now. Gaddy Keltner, Bienvenue, and Montese. Just one call, it's easy. Nobody messes with those guys. You get it all at... To afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. 
Action News 5 Close Captioning is sponsored by Lifeblood. Donate blood today. Tonight at 10, a bite from this tiny assassin could be the... Big baseball news for you. The St. Louis Cardinals were optimistic Chris Carpenter would return from injury shortly after the All-Star break. Now, they're just hoping he'll be ready for spring training next season. Carpenter will undergo season-ending surgery to repair a nerve in his shoulder that's held him out of since spring training. The Cards canceling a bullpen session for Carpenter yesterday because the strength in his shoulder just still hadn't come back. The 37-year-old is hopeful to resume his career next year. It was a tough decision, no question about it, because it's something that we dealt with in 08. Um, but uh, I did everything I could to, to to see if I can get back. I still want to pitch. I want to pitch again, and this is going to be the way to, for me to pitch again. Uh, Carpenter helped lead the Cardinals to the World Series title last season, going 4-0 with a 3.25 ERA and six postseason starts. St. Louis General Manager John Bozalak said the recovery time is three to six months. Carpenter will undergo the knife July 19th in Dallas. On the field pitch. last night, former Memphis Craig Redbird Alan Craig had a big hand and bat in the cards picking up their second victory in a row, a 9-3 thrashing of the Colorado Rockies. First to bat, Craig, who's had injury problems of his own, built not one but two home runs. The first, a two-run shot to center field that gets away from everybody out there. The second, a solo blast straight away. Craig two for four right at the plate ball. with three RBIs. As for the hand, he ends the game with a nice diving stop and throw to first to end the action. Cards and Rockies go at it again tonight. We'll have highlights for you right here tonight at 10. Now to the NBA where the Memphis Grizzlies are caught up in a free agent free-for-all with several other teams all looking to pick up the same talent. The Grizz targeted Boston Celtics sharpshooter Ray Allen as the man to go to after with their $5 million mid-level exception. But the AP is reporting Allen will meet with the NBA champion Miami Heat on Thursday. Now, the Heat only has a $3 million exception to offer Allen, but the defending NBA champions look primed to make another run for the title next season with LeBron James and company. And Allen, who turns 37 later this month, wants another ring. Allen, who had a conference call with the Grizzlies Monday, is also scheduled to meet with the LA Clippers on Friday. And that's it for sports. We'll be right back. Ashley Furniture Home Store gets us. You could be in a totally different room than the TV and know when a furniture commercial comes on. Lots of yelling, salespeople saying this is going to be the best price ever. And when you walk in those places, rarely, if ever, is that true. It's yeah. the same price. They've just spun it a different way. What I want in a furniture store is to know that I can walk in any day of the year, any day of the week, and know that the price I see is the best available anywhere. And that's what we get at Ashley Furniture Home Store. That's what's valuable to us. Ashley Furniture Home Store gets Johnny. And Katie. $800? I can't afford this now. Do you take payments? No, ma'am. Sometimes unexpected repair bills can be a bit of a shock to your wallet. But at Gateway Tire, we offer the Gateway Card. Six months, same as cash. That's how we go the distance. Thanks, Gateway. I love my new Toyo tires. At Gateway Tire, we go the distance. Go the distance for you. Life is what you make it. At Super Low Foods, life is what you make it. Grab hold and take it. That's what you make it. Life is tasty, and you're gonna see life tastes so deliciously. It comes from Super Low naturally. Life is what you make it. It's Nissan's 4th of July sales event. Celebrate with up to $1,000 holiday bonus cash on top of existing offers. Visit ChooseNissan.com. Test drive at your local Nissan dealer. Hurry. $1,000 holiday bonus cash ends July 9th. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan with some straight talk. If you hire a lawyer who never goes to trial, you'll not receive the compensation you deserve because the insurance company knows about them and their fear. They also know about us and our verdicts. These are our verdicts we've received in the courtroom in the last three years, not settlements, verdicts. And if the firm you hire takes the last offer and never goes to trial, you don't even need them. At Morgan & Morgan, our results are our reputation. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. 
That's going to do it for Action News 5 at 6 o'clock. Come back and see us tonight at 10. A scuffle at a church that led a woman to use her Bible to beat the pastor. Janice Broach is working on that. We'll have more on that for you tonight at 10. Remarkable story. Jarvis will be back with Sports Date. We'll have an update on the forecast. We'll see you at 10. Win $777 every